year 2006, uh, Davidson Canyon was designated an Arizona Outstanding Water. And uh, one thing about that is um, PAG conducted some isotope and solute studies back in 2002 that showed that Davidson contributes somewhere between 8 and 40 percent of the base flow to Sienega Creek below that confluence depending on the season. And it contributes more when Sienega um, is flowing lower, so it really stabilizes the base flow, showing the importance of Davidson to Sienega. And then uh, 2009 is when I mark uh, severe drought starting again. 2006 was wetter. And 2009, um, the, our wet dry mapping in June, when it's the lowest flows, was around one and a half miles, as opposed to the 9.5 miles you saw in the really wet years of the mid-1980s. So it's been about that low ever since. And also I put in 2010, Pima County metro population reached one million. I want, to put one, I want to put one thing in there, which is the Barbie Ranch acquisition, which is 2005. Um, and that would have been the first major acquisition after the bond initiative in 2004. Um, I also had 2007 Rosemont MPO. And then 2008, 2009, Pima County acquires the Sands and then, or the client and then the Sands Ranch. Where does the Amparita come in? Um, so Amparita was what, 2000 and, uh, what was that, 2010, I think, right? Yeah. 2010. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that really ended a previous 10 years of effort trying to make that satellite community go away because we had a land trade in 91 to get the Emperor Ranch headquarters, uh, but we didn't actually get the water rights. They still retained the water rights to pump from Santa Cruz Creek until that, nine, until that 2010 acquisition of the 2,600 acres near the wet zones. Right, and that... And also, Emperito is sort of one of the last acquisitions in the entire bond package from 2004. We're still hoping to have another bond initiative to continue. Was that in the AMA, those water rights? No. No, it's no. just outside. No, actually, it? this was a negotiated thing, you know, so. Because um, for groundwater, was, there are no water rights, right? You put a well this in next to. It's a contractual to, right. Oh, contractual right. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to point out that in 20, about 2010, is when the Donaldsons left the Empire Ranch and Ian, Ian Thomerson took the grazing allotment over. So. What's the lesson learned from Ian? The lesson Which? learned from Ian, actually there's quite a few lessons. And one is that I think, at least from our standpoint, there was a lot of fear. We'd been working with you know, this great group of grazing operators for decades and what was going to happen. What was the true test of what we wrote in that resource management plan about about managing grazing on this area was a new grazing operator coming in and from what I've observed so far I think it's been very successful the, the infrastructure and the processes that we put in place to continue the collaboration and the input have effectively transitioned to the new ranching um, person in here and, and, and that, that you can manage the ranch in a number of different ways and um, still be successful um, with both the ranching operation and the protection of the resources. And his rotation system is very similar to the Donaldson's in the sense he uses best pasture, right? Yeah. Well, I, I think it's important, though, that, that, that I think BLM really lucked out with Ian Tomlinson. Yeah. And one of the, he's, he, part of the reason is because he's so flexible, and the other reason is he's, he's using a lot more of the ranch than has ever been used. He's using the waters far more effectively than even the, the, the Donaldsons did. And I think he deserves an incredible amount of, of credit. I really do.